Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm joined by Gary Curran, and oh, we yeah. are here to speak about. Well, basically, we're gonna we're gonna predict if we were picking the Ireland team tomorrow. Who, yeah. Who would it be, or who would we want it to be? Big space of this press conference the other day. Basically, there's gonna be no real surprises. There could be a, a, the likelihood is the two that could be most likely put in you know, James McCarthy and Shane Long. But if we're kind of going around the team without kind of going a bit gung ho or a bit mad because he's clearly said he's not going to pick the likes of Malumbi and stuff like that. Mm. It's not a game for debuts. But if you're looking at it, what's your? I suppose go with your eleven, and I'll give you my eleven after. Well, just what we were talking about in the last couple of videos. Uh, Glenn Whelan was a huge topic, and obviously you were talking to Mick this week, and he came out saying that you know if Glenn's playing football. He's a shoe in to be playing because obviously over the last two years his performances have merited that and I do agree with that. I think that yeah. is a good idea. Um, I think the team is easier pick now than it was over the last couple of years, especially because we're not, like you said, you're, or like Mick said, we're not blooding in any talents. We're not handing any debuts. This is a, this is a very important game and we're going to go for the old Royals, the people have been, you know, who've been there for the last two years. So obviously you have to start with Randolph and goals. Yeah, well he's basically said that. He said even if he's not playing, he's... He's a standout keeper by a mile. That's yeah. basically what he said. So I presume we will be going for the two wing backs and maybe th three at the back, or are they going to go four, 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 three, three? I, I don't see him experimenting. Mm. So, well, look, so it's, it, it, it's what you want. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can be as imaginative, but in a realistic sense as well. Okay, so I would go for Coleman on the right. I would have Stevens on the left. Egan with oh they're not handing any debuts I was, I was, I've been really impressed with, with uh, O'Shea for West Brom recently you can't have him I know Shane Duffy. I know I know but sure, Shane Duffy's kind of been, been has has these injuries issues at the moment so but mm. you know you he's had injuries in, in, uh, sorry, he had injuries for the Denmark game yeah he was fine, so. that's true okay well obviously then Shane Duffy because he's obviously quick a healer go, go, sorry he's a quick healer he is a quick healer and he's a massive goal threat as well so Shane Duffy does have to be um, in there as well so in midfield Obviously, Glenn, I would personally go Hurahan and Hendrick. Okay. So, Glenn in the six, Hurahan and Hendrick there. And then my top three would be McGoldrick, McLean, and Robinson. Doherty. Doherty in the top three. Mm. If Robbie Brady's fit, does, does he go in there as well? Does Shane Long? Is he playing enough? No, he's not playing enough, but you know. The thing, the thing, the thing about playing McGoldrick and Long is they won't obviously don't score enough goals. Yeah, <laughs> like, who does? Yeah, but I'm just saying that they don't score a lot of goals. They obviously affect games, but I would rather, if it was me personally, I would rather have someone who's a bit of a nuisance mm -hmm. and then someone who does maybe score goals more than yeah. the other. But yeah, as I suppose, we're not blessed with, with, with striker scoring goals, and there is still forty, I think, eight days, forty-eight days. If someone like maybe uh, Aaron Connolly can start getting a little run of games in the yeah. Premier League, because he's the most likely of anyone that, else that we have that will score a goal if he's playing. Yeah. But I think he, he seems to have lost a bit of confidence or he's just man. He just needs to run them. another run of games or something yeah. like that. I mean, it'd be nice if he, you know, because obviously when he came into our squad, he was off the back of scoring two for Spurs and he was really, you know, really high on confidence. But mm. since then, it's just kind of been a. Like he's been. A lull. To be, a lull. But to be fair, he came on and they go back to being a nuisance. He came on and affected games um, for Brighton against the likes of Chelsea and all. Yeah. Uh, when they were losing, they ended up getting. Remember that that lad from Iran scored that bicycle kick. Yeah, um, Bash. That's the one. Yeah, uh, I wasn't even going to attempt to say anything. There. <laughs> but uh, he, 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 in my opinion, he effectively yeah. changed the game when he came on there because they didn't really look like doing it. Like so, regardless of whatever, just want young legs either in the squad maybe not starting but in the squad to maybe come off the bench and affect it like you look at when he did against George when he came out he was on for 10 minutes and mm. he terrorised them and again that goes back to being high off coming off yeah. uh, scoring goals He all he needs is one goal going off the arse just before the, the, the um, playoff comes up but yeah like I, I, I see your logic in, your, in the team that you've picked like it's pretty it's, safe. it's, it's not it's glamorous safe. it's safe yeah, it's a yeah, safe yeah, team yeah, yeah. yeah but like if anything happens between, I suppose I'll go with my eleven, and we'll kind of look at yeah how we could mix it about. But yeah, I suppose I would go Coleman at right back. He's at to get his place back. Um, he's working Carlo Ancelotti. Um, generally around this time of year, like last year, he was excellent. He came into a great run of form last season. He was even nominated for Player of the Month, uh, one of the months leading up to the end of the season. 
So for me, Seamus Coleman um, gets in. He's a captain as well. People, like people forget he had, oh, yeah, he had yeah. one bad game against Switzerland. One out of, if you go back in time, out of how many? So for me, Seamus gets in there at right back. Um, then at centre back, John Egan and um, yeah, Shane Do- Or if one of them's injured, Clark comes in automatically there as, as the uh, obvious replacement um, for either or. Hopefully, God bless, nothing happens. And Stevens. You know, I think he's one of the only players to play every single game this season for in the Premier League. Yeah. He's been excellent. He's been so solid. He's been brilliant. But he's, he's, he's probably up there in the top two or top three left backs in the Premier League. And if you're going off leagues, it's the best league in the world. So you could argue he's the second best, third best left back in the world right now. You could argue it. I'm not saying I mean, it's that, a shout, like it's a big shout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, how often do we get to say things? We might as well yeah, blow yeah, it out of yeah. proportion a little bit. <laughs> I think that's fair enough. But... Uh, yeah, so you know, so that's back four. Then I'm gonna go just keep it four three three, and I think um, my preference will be having James McCarthy in there. Mick McCarthy's preference will obviously be having Glenn Whelan in there. He's, he's his number one for that position. Mm. But I'm, I'm gonna go with my team. Um, James McCarthy, defensive midfielder. Um, it's tough then because you can't, I think Hendrick gets in there either way. He's stuck. He's stuck with him the whole way through. I can just say that. He stuck with him uh, the whole way through the campaign. Yeah, I think he really likes him. I yeah. think he bring it, he gives Mick what he wants that energy, and you know he gets around the pitch. He's athletic, and Mick likes that in a yeah. player. Whereas I'm not really sure that's um, Howerton's best attribute. I think he's more, you know, his passing range is yeah. much better, and, and he's he, our set piece specialist, which we always need. You know, if you have yeah. someone like Shane Duffy in the box and David McGoldrick there as well, you need to be able to have someone on the team that is has a one for a corner or a free kick or anything like that. So he gets mm. in. And as well as that, he's fantastic football ability as well. And he's, the performances he's been putting in for Villa have been good. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, well, he, well, I'm not putting him in. I'm just saying that when you have him in there with Hendrick, I don't know if they cancel each other out or, or whatever. It just hasn't really worked as much as probably he would, he would have wanted it to. Yeah. Um, he likes Howard in, but if you notice, he played Alan Brown yeah. against Denmark. The likelihood is he's probably going to pick the same team if it that played Denmark because he was basically saying that was the best performance of the thing. So that's likely what he's going to go with. But um, I'm going to probably put Alan Brown in there, and I didn't think I'd say that till right now. But I'm going to put him in there. I didn't think he'd done anything wrong when he's been picked. He does like a goal as well. But that kind of leaves the set piece thing. I know. Anyway, um, I'm going to go with, uh, I think James McLean, I think he's in fabulous form. If we're, going, if we're form. going current form right now, and I think he's, uh, he's in great form and he's scoring goals. And I think if that McLean comes in, not the headless chicken McLean that has been around for a while, unfortunately. Um, but the McLean now, he seems to have his head screwed on. Oh, he, he seems to be having good performances, yeah. So he, I think he, he is married and deserves to get in there, definitely. Yeah, but his head seems in the, in the, in the right space now. And I think if you can carry that into... The playoffs. Mm. Um, touch wood. He's uh, he's fit for it. But if he can continue his run of vein, uh, run of form uh, in a rich vein of form, I think I was trying to say. <laughs> but uh, if he can continue that, then I think he's a shoe in on the left hand side. Mick likes him anyway, and he's yeah. played him when he's out of form. And now that he's in form, I think he'll pick him. Then on the right, I would have Matt Doherty in front of Seamus Coleman. Okay. He said in his press conference that you know it didn't work before. He doesn't think it will work, but. He has a conundrum on the right hand side yeah. and he doesn't know what to do. Callum Robinson's have to drop him down to the championship because yeah. he wasn't getting game time. For me, I think he's better in the, through the middle anyway. But uh Doherty, that position without that position of just further forward. Doesn't have to be like a right sided midfielder, but just further forward yeah. as in a, a, like you've only got a certain amount of the area of the pitch that you gotta be in. So say from the halfway line to their goal rather than coming the whole way back, yeah, would suit him more. It, you know, give, don't give him so much def- defensive uh, responsibility. Let Coleman's so, a solid defender, and when he's expected to, come, like you look at him, he played against Wilfred Zaha and he made Zaha look average the other day. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And people, everyone in the Premier League is trying to sign Wilfred Zaha because he's so good. Yeah. Alice just won't let him go because he costs too much, which is fair enough. But he, like Coleman, defensively, when he knows he's a task at hand, he's very, very good. But I think with Switzerland, as we were complicating, we were trying to pass it out, and he was constantly mm. midfielders weren't coming in, yeah, and stuff like that. So I think even when you have someone like James McCarthy there, he knows what James McCarthy's going to do for him. Yeah, good mates and stuff like that. But um, 
I think him and him and Doherty are good mates as well. So if it is the case, they would be able to talk to each other and say, right, well, we're making an overlap. You just took in. And it's common sense. Yeah, I mean, like, Doherty's been doing it for Wolves for the last couple of seasons. You know, he's he's well capable to play in that area of the pitch. He's, he's no issues getting forward. But I can see where you're coming from with your starting eleven as well. But for me, I think on the night, there's going to be three really important players. And they're going to be down the spine. It's going to be Duffy from our set pieces, Hurahan delivering the set pieces, and McGoldrick holding up the ball and winning free kicks. Like we, need, like we need to get in those areas where we're putting the ball in the box. And I feel the reason I have McLean and Robinson in is just to put their full backs under pressure. And if we do have a breakaway, that speed mm. is there as well. So I think that the spine is important, but we need to have a little bit of pace on the sides. Well, well. actually, even now that Shane Long can play on the right-hand side. That's well. true. That's so true. That, that's another option. Um, that, and obviously I'm going to go with Dizzy up front, so I don't think I... I mentioned that, but he's a shoe in for yeah, me, yeah, if yeah, he's absolutely. fit. Absolutely. Um, I think he just brings something that we don't have. He can, he gets us further up the pitch. He takes the ball in. He brings other people into play. And for someone like, say McGoldrick takes the kick out, comes in, or a long ball comes up, he can take it out to the right-hand side and long go in the middle yeah. as this, uh, and just get a flick on. So all we need is that one little flick on, yeah. flick on and, and get that goal. If we got a goal against Slovakia, we'd stun them and then if we can build on that because that's it always seems to be that we could concede a goal and mm. then we have a go at teams I, I would like to see us after um, the first half if there's no goals mm. um, I'd like to see us attack from the second half onwards I wouldn't like to see us go straight in because I think we get beaten that way but I think if we can manage to just keep it level or be winning uh, yeah, for, yeah. For, to, up until half time I think then obviously Go for it in the second half. So we've gone for the same goalkeeper and the same back four. It's our midfield three and basically our front three. Mm. That well, is, I'm, that well I'm, I'm trying to shoehorn uh, Matt Doherty in there because I think he deserves to be in there. I think you know he obviously scored the goal against Denmark as well. Mm. I think he's. I think he deserves. A lot I would more. like. I would like to see that three, and I do understand why Doherty will be in there. But I feel the midfield three that I've picked is the more likely. The Maybe it's because it's no the, the the middle three. I the forward three. You know, like you could, like you were saying, Doherty could 100% play on the right, and it'd be a, a drop and roll. But that would put McLean under a little bit more pressure as well. You know, because his crosses would have to be hitting McGoldrick every time. Like there'd be no, there'd be, like Doherty would be get, coming in late into a back post if we were on the break. Do you know what I mean? Well, not really, because you, like you saying is, I'm talking about Doherty as an attacker. Yeah, but Doherty's always up in the box. For yeah, him. I know, but like he box. will have more defensive duties with us than he would, let's say, because yeah, we're playing. With but. There he hasn't been getting forward as much this season as well. There is also the, you know, and I think you touched on it before, Gary Spain might have touched on it before and said that um, there is the option of playing McCarthy and Whelan, but I think that you reduce your yeah. um, attacking. It's very, it's, it's not, I wouldn't call it negative, but it's, it's definitely, it's more about holding onto the ball and slowing the game down. That, that, yeah. that tactic would slow the game down. Now, that could work as well. But I think we need to keep the ball as much in their half as, as, as possible. I think that's why McGoldrick gives you so much. Yeah. I think if McLean is playing like he has been playing, I think he's getting further forward now. Because he, he, the last few years, you think of um, McLean and you think of Ireland and you just think of your forward here and everybody else back in their own half. Mm. And then when they put forward now, I feel sorry for the likes of... Um, James Collins and stuff like that. You look how isolated he was against Georgia yeah. and you know, Scott Hogan and these types of players. Whereas they get battered, but they're up against two, three centre halves sometimes by themselves, and all our players are in our own half. Yeah, and they're expected to hold it up and yeah. get battered and, and then score goals on top of that. Yeah, but I think David McGoldrick does it the best. And he I does. think that shows we really missed him against um, Georgia, mm. whereas he's actually able to take the ball in. And he's he may probably not look that strong, but he definitely oh, no, he is. He's, very strong. he's, he's a, a big man. He's a big man, yeah. So I think, yeah, I mean, our, our teams are, are are fairly similar, and I think it's, I think it's because what Mick said, yeah, basically, it's, it's going to come down to injuries and form, and I do think that you know if you have the likes of, you know, um, Aaron Connolly, I, Troy Power won't be in the squad. I doubt very much he will, but yeah. uh, Aaron Connolly, Shane Long. These types Robinson, of players, Doherty, yeah. those type of the, the impact players, like yeah. Well, I'd like to see Doherty start from being honest uh, ahead of Robinson. I think he gives more than Robinson, but Robinson is a natural attacking player, so I get that. It's gonna be it's it, it, it's it's gonna be so important because I think that, as you say, there's three positions that really need um, 
that, that could be really important and that's that second midfield spot where it's Brown or Heron. Yeah. Uh, and then it's going to be the right side and then uh, right back. Yeah. So it's... And then the six as well. Like he could... Like I, we know he's going to go for Whelan but like if, McK- if Whelan is not up for it McCarthy goes in there straight away. If he's, if, if he's fit. If he's not fit then it's Josh Cullen. Do, do you know what I mean? Like so... It all depends. Like you said, it's a, over 40 days away. We're obviously starting to get a little bit nervous. We're trying to predict the team, which is quite difficult. But you can do it as well. Let us know. Um, maybe don't play our teams against each other because they're quite similar. But what would you go for? Who would you go for? Would you try something new? Uh, you can let us know. Randolph staying in the goal. So before you even tr- try and try anyone else in there, that one's not I don't. Th- I don't think anybody would. I, I don't, don't think, think so. Anybody would. Maybe but one crackpot in the comments. Is yeah, that you? Let us know. Some Mark Travers or something. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. We'll speak to you soon. Leave your comments below.